Hello everyone. So today we are going to start our first in-depth tutorial. So if you saw the first focus tutorial, which was available for all, all tiers and is the first thing I posted on my Patreon, you would have seen that this is the in-depth drawing we read it up. So you should all have, I'll just repost the reference photo as well. So it's royalty free on Unsplash, can be used. Now I have this on A3 paper. If you also use A3 paper and you grid it up along with me, then you are already where I am. So you can see I just erased all the extra non-essential lines. I kept it inside. I don't use the grid um, for the shading part. I completely only use it to draw it up. So from here I'm going to eyeball it and yeah so i'll cover up these lines erase it as i go along make it lighter and then yeah we'll get started so for the first part of the in-depth tutorial we'll be focusing on the facial area i will try my hardest to not start things that we aren't going to cover like the tech we are going to leave that for a separate part of the tutorial if you seen some if you know i am i'm a naughty artist i move around everywhere i don't finish one area and then go along so i'll try my hardest for you all for some consistency to finish first the horse itself and then we move along to the tech and then we have a separate mane and neck tutorial because the neck is quite a big part of the specific drawing and it's can be quite daunting especially if you don't quite know how to shade it where to start how to put in all the little details the reference is quite detailed i can see fur and hair if i zoom it in so we will be focusing on that as well i have absolutely no idea how long this is going to take how detailed i'm probably going to make it detailed but we will see how it goes there's a lot of stuff to cover luckily it's a side profile only one eye pretty basic pretty easy but the tech is quite a lot of it the man is short and there's quite a extensive area that we need to cover so we will be starting with my trusty 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 if i can find it two edge pencil so, I always start my drawing with a 2H or F pencil to start in the shading process and everything. So this is my trusty little beginning pencil. I will be showing you what I'm using throughout. I will explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And then you're more than welcome to put on something in the background. Well, I also have something quietly in the background in my earphones. And then yeah, let's get started. So I always start with the eyes first and that's what we'll be doing today. So let's get into it. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to use this pencil to map out areas. I'm going to start on this inside corner when there's quite a definite darkness or shadow. And then yeah, we go from there. So I'm basically just using this pencil to map out, sh out shadows and forms and shapes in the face. And then I will use that to work off of for other things. So I always start very not detailed and then I go from there. So this is very loose, loose pressure, don't want to go in very hard just yet. I'll try, as I said, my hardest to finish something before I move on, but for this area I'm going to kind of work on it all together. I like to have more than one area as complete as it helps me to see and judge values and tones for something else. 
I tend to go a bit darker than the reference. So yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons why I like having a whole drawing kind of filled in before I go in with details. Just makes it easier for me to judge which direction I want to go. Do I want to go darker? Is there something that has to be lighter to come more forward? So yeah. So this horse is quite expressive with his eyes and its face, so I definitely want to capture that whole vibe of something's happening with the expression and movement of the drawing. So yeah, that's the goal. So the eyes are definitely for me the most important part. It needs to be right. Now always start with it first. Always. So yeah. So if you did do the grading up tutorial with me, you were more than welcome to add more detail. I think I did mention that in the end. If you do need more to work off of before you start to drawing, you can add that. I just wanted you to see how I do it, what I need to start off with. So if you need more stuff, there's absolutely nothing wrong with adding it in the in the drawing. If you want to map out where the shadows actually go, because there's some drop shadows from tech in this area, and you can add that. I tend to only add the important stuff. And then I go from there. So it has a blaze right here, leaving that to last. Now I don't leave areas of the paper white. I cover everything and then use highlights and shadows to give the illusion that it's white. So I also do basic shapes and forms. I don't usually complete the shapes when I do the drawing. I will I refine it once I start shading in. And that's why I like going in with two edge pencil is because I do the refinement kind of in this step. So I won't have much time to be drawing today. We have what we call load shedding in South Africa. We just completed ours from 10 to 12 city. And our next one is at 6. So I um, only have a short window. Hopefully after 8 I'm still in the mood to get some stuff done. So we will see how far we get today. That I can have the first part up for you. This will definitely need to be moved in separate parts. I'll try and keep it consistent, like a part for the face, part for the tack, part for the neck and the mane. Maybe split those two because I have a feeling that will be quite extensive. And might be too tedious to put up in one thing. So I'm still quite sketchy with my outlines. I'm not a, I think I would make a, a bad illustrator because I can't, can't draw consistent non-sketchy lines. Although I do get it right when I work with pen because it's a get it down the first try type of thing.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, so I'm gonna move along. So I'm gonna grab a brush. Any soft brush will do. I find makeup brushes, this is a makeup brush, work quite well. I don't think maybe synthetic paint brushes will work. If you can find one, you can find small ones, big ones, depending on your needs. You can even use, uh, let me find a paper stump. You can even find one of these guys for, because I'm going to use graphite powder. I find this works well when if you want to put in lots of concentration of it and this just works for a soft application so that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a soft application of me graphite powder so I'm going to put the brush in but tap it off quite like vigorously and then I'm just going to go in this is also what I use as a base a lot and also for blending in between layers so I like, I don't working on a white paper, strange, I know. I like to have something down. It's like um, painters who put down, I'm not quite sure what it's called. It's something with the eye. Layer that they put down with, I think it's raw umber, one of those brownie orange types where they put a wash of color down and then they work over top of it. Uh, this is the exact same concept that I use. It just helps for, for me with the building up process. And if it goes everywhere, it's fine. I'll just erase it, which I will do now. If I can find all my stuff. I had a pack eraser around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. So I use putty erasers and I use a Tombow Mono eraser. I have an electric eraser here somewhere, but I haven't used it in a while. Um, you can use those as well. They work quite well. But for this purpose, the Mono eraser has kind of overtaken that one's role. But it works just as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a 3B pencil and I'm just going to sharpen up this guy. And then I'm just going to put in shadows more. So I'm going to now focus on the eye itself. Let me just erase here for the white layers and I don't forget. There's a quite highlighted area here. I sometimes do use a white gel pen to put in that. It's very white. It's like white, white. But I do that in the end. I sometimes do it for tack details and stitching. And you can go over it with pencil. So yeah. You can do that as well. But we'll get there when we get there. For now we're just using pencils. So I'm using light pressure with this pencil. Not very harsh. I don't want to. This is not as deep as we're going to go. Soft. A light pressure. So this eye is not very big. Still substantial size, but not very big. So not as detailed as the focus eye tutorial I put up. But that one is a very good tutorial. It's got some nice details in the eye itself. And the surrounding areas. Still being quite sketchy with my lines.
there is a highlight here I'm not going to fill that in there is some horizontal lines going like this which looks like a fence we are going to hint at that slightly and there's a tree branch by the looks of it there I'm just going to take a paper stamp and I'm just going to blend Gonna take my where it did it go now? Two edge pencil again. And just focus. And we're just gonna go over where we were. So I do this a lot, start with two or three basic pencils and then work my way from there. And then I raise in between. So it's got some uh, quite expressive lines up here. I'm not going to put it in just yet. It's not that deep of a shadow, but you can easily add it over top. Just hint at it here because it fades quite nicely into this front part. So I'm going to take my 3B again. And we're just going to continue doing what we're doing. Every time I become more precise with what I'm doing. Put in sharper lines. Add more depth. And then I'll go in just now because this is there's a highlight here that I've covered, but that can easily be taken away with the eraser. The pupil is not as dark as maybe this area or this area at the top here. But it's still visible as being there. There we go. I'm going to put this on the bottom line here. I'm going to take my mono eraser, this little guy, and we're going to map out some highlights. So there's one there, this one on the inside of this line. Kind of kept this one out. I'm just going to put it back in. And I haven't covered this little 
spotting here. But as I said, I usually go in with the gel pen for that white of a highlight because it's super white to edge pencil. dark for there for my liking so I'm just going to erase it to edge pencil again we're just going to tighten it up a bit there we go I'm going to take a B pencil and just it's not as dark as a 3B put it in see it doesn't take much layers or many details to already get some expression in the eye to get it going so uh, not this one where did it go this one so take 3b pencil again continue here it's inside corner All the time remaining using soft pressure, not hard pressure at all. Blending stump again. Now we're going to take mono eraser. Now I'm gonna take a five. No, let's go with eight B. I mean, I just need to sharpen it. It's a small little pencil that I put in a pencil extender. It's one of my favorite little pencils to use. There we go. So I just slot it in. <gasps> now I'm being very precise. Putting a hint of that highlight in just ever so slightly. very very barely touching the paper with this pencil because it's got quite a lot of oomph packs quite a punch and do not be afraid of those very dark pencils they really the darkness adds to the drawing and it really makes the highlights pop really gives depth and dimension to it so use it to your advantage.
grime. I'm going to use my two edge again. And we're just going to work around. So I normally go in with a dark pencil and then I... You don't need to use a blending stump or a brush. I just sometimes use an edge pencil to blend out a B pencil. I find it works quite well. I think it's almost the same when you burnish a coloured pencil. But I stand corrected if it's not like that. But it's just help using another pencil to blend out this one. And it works like a charm. And you don't need a lot of pressure to do it. So, yeah. Already got an eye. It's not as deep yet as it will be. Highlights aren't as profound as it will be. I'm just gonna put in that little. There you go. That this is just a B pencil that I just picked up now, just to help with that blending out. So the smaller the thing is you're working on, you have to really go for the illusion of the detail rather than the actual detail. I mean, there are people that work on tiny, tiny scale, no idea how they do it. But it's all just an illusion of detail and using very small, very small tools. So I'm just continuing to building with building up the forms in the face. I'm just going to take a different blending. Some of this one has less pencil on it than this one. This one, as you can see, is quite well used. So I'm just going to use this one to blend out. So I have quite a few blending stumps next to me. I typically use this one for smaller. You can find, I have a very tiny one, thin one around here somewhere but it's very flimsy and wonky and well <laughs> well used so it doesn't work that well so see it's all muted now but that's just the way I do things put it in blend it out okay now we're gonna take our 3b 3b and we're gonna go up to this corner 
So these dark lines look out of place now because it's not, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the drawing because the rest of the drawing hasn't been filled in with the proper tones and the values yet. So we'll get there. But still, light pressure. The hardest pressure I went in with was this, okay, to get these dark lines here. With both the 3B and the 8B pencil. So shadows aren't always just pure darkness and black. You can sometimes in the shadows still see contours of the face. So just be aware of that. That's why I like building up the shadows so that you avoid that mistake. And that you can build up the tones and the values within the shadows. Because shadows aren't always just dark. There is definitely something to be seen in them. So yeah. So I'm using a flat side, not the pointy side of the pencil. And that just helps to keep it soft and not apply as much pressure. Now I'm using the pointy side. Or this bottom ridge in the lid just to make it more defined than it was just scooch it in there we go so it looks quite odd now because this is more light than it's supposed to be but that's easily fixed later on I'm going back in with a two edge pencil back to the top just blending in the shadows and as I go along I still refine the forms and the shapes of the face Also be aware when I start taking in the details, always try and go in the direction of the hair and direction of the form if it's curved or it's indented. So just also be aware of that. I always try and take the pencils in the direction of the face and the form and the contours.
So this part of the face has more hints of her detail over here than down here. I'm still considering whether I'm going to put in fur down here by myself or just leave it like the reference more f flat you see the horse's face is shaved but it's quite short there we go so the forms are quite robust and still flat still working on it there we go Yeah, I am using a bit harder pressure, but not all the way. And I am, am using the more pointed side as well. So I always try, I don't like drawing like this. Only when I want to put in very sharp detailed lines, I try and keep my pencils like this when drawing in the basic shapes. So it just is a lot easier to keep soft, to maintain soft pressure. Clicking with my blending stamp, and then we're just gonna blend this all in. So I do this quite often. I do it when I put in fur details, building up the layers. It just gives the depth to it. Not just a few lines put over white paper, but there's actually foundation to to what you're putting on top. It gives it substance and something. It's not as highlighted, so I'm just going to pull that in. I'm going to use a mono eraser and we're just going to put in some highlights. So this is going to look harsh now but we are going to build up the layers and blend it in. Put some back into the eye. now we have something to base everything off of so i'm just gonna put in that more take my two edge and then just gently go back in there we go some highlights up here highlights in the front 
that highlight's still very definite. There we go. Let's pop the gaps like this. You can use it to form your shapes a bit better. You can also use it to map out things. If you want to map, put in a base of graphite powder and use the eraser to map out your shapes, you can do that as well. I really do that. I like doing it with actual paper and not erasing it. So now I'm gonna maybe go in. Let's see. Let's try this 4H 4H pencil. So my range of pencils go from a 7H all the way up to a 9B, I think is the highest that I've got. So there is some eye texture detail here, so I'm going to quickly take my mono eraser. You can put those types of details in before you start, but since this area is so small, it's kind of difficult to actually put it there. So I'm going to reference it, put the illusion of it there. So I'm going to take something a bit darker for first. Take an HB. Then we're going to just elude to it. Slightly. There's some rounder shapes. Take my eight B pencil again. Round out the shape here at the bottom. Darken up inside the eye as well. So this is me just typically seeing things. And then I want to quickly put them in before I not unsee them, but find something else and then forget about them. Very soft pressure. Let's go back to where we actually started. I'm going to take our four edge again. So now we're starting to be a bit more precise in what we're doing. And this full edge can actually 
put in nice details and forms and shapes. It's not going to help as much the darker areas, but it's just going to help blend it out. So as you can see, still using the forge, and I can put quite a dark area in with this pencil because it's overstop other things. So it's got already come something to work off of. So I'm just going to use this full edge to clean up the slime between the tack and the face. There. Blendy blendy stamp. Still full edge. We're just gonna build up this area. It still will go a lot darker just for this to fit into the face. I've already mentioned I tend to go a bit dark on my drawings. Then the reference photo. So I'm now going to switch to a 2 of 3 b pencil again. And we're just going to continue here. Put in this line first. Make it more pronounced. Then we're going to work on the surrounding areas.
So I'm still using the three pen pencil, mapping out the darker shapes in this area of the face. Very slight pressure still. I'm going to move that up the brow. There we go. Still soft, soft pressure. Circular motions. So yeah, I'm moving in stroke-like motions. Just put in a bit of texture. Darken up the shadow. So as you can see, I'm holding my pencil a bit shorter now. Just to get that real precise application. Okay, I'm going to take my blending stump again, this highlight's bothering me, so I'm just going to blend it out, blend it out. Circular motions with this blending stump. Moderate pressure. You just continue on from there. Blend out this harsh area. A bit more pressure here just to get the pencil moving. And that's why I go in with light pressure with the pencil as to so that I can blend it out. A lot easier because if you're going harsh the paper stunt won't move it as much and it will kind of sit there where you left it you get some blend but not not a lot There we go. See, as you can see now, the form is now actually starting to take shape. And it's all building up. And it's getting the contours of face. It's starting to, starting to resemble what I want it to resemble. So that's the beauty of layering your pencils. Is you start, it slowly, it starts to build up. And you start to see it. it looks absolutely horrific in the beginning. 
but in the end you start getting this type of effect where it's soft it, the, it kind of comes out at you the form and the shape and everything so I'm just going to take an HP pencil we're going to do exactly the same thing build up our tones build up our values build up the darks and then maybe I'm going to start fiddling with fur texture and everything like that hinting at it it's very prevalent at the top here so that's what we're going to do so HP short stubby strokes so there is a highlight here but I'm going to put it in later actually this pencil is not working for me so I'm going to take a, I don't want to take a B pencil, you know what, I'm going to take the three B pencil again, but sharpen it up this time. There we go, okay. So I'm just going to take the putty eraser and just quickly erase this highlight that I see I suppose we go more like that so okay let's start building up our little texture so exactly the same as I said four short stubby strokes this is also has got quite short fur and always Keep in mind to go direction of the hair. Just going to blend that out to round out the shape and remove that harsh line. And also lighten up this area. There we go. I'm going to blend, darken this up and short strokes. Also, not hard pressure, light pressure. I think the big takeaway is your hard pressure rarely comes in only at the end. I rarely use hard pressure for any of my drawings. Only for these dark lines will I use dark pressure. The rest is built up softly, soft layers really gives you that nice soft touch effect so as you can see the reference that i uploaded is full color i really work off of black and white drawings i have in the past there's some few that are black and white but I'm tending to move away from working off of black and white drawings as much as I can, black and white references as much as I can. I think with the color, it you have to, it's easy in the beginning to work off the black and white because you can easier see the tones and the values and how dark and this and that. But you really working off of a color reference and translating that into black and white is something I think every black and white artist needs to learn because you definitely start getting your eye in for certain values and tones and how to translate that into black and white and how deep or how light is it really is the color and the highlight is a different color that dark and then this one but the same if you get what I'm saying so the eye I put up is black and white but that's just the reference stood out to me there's definitely going to be some other focus tutorials and stuff that will be off color references you'll see I will mostly work off of color references it's really good for you just to get everything in. 
get your eye in really get to know your medium i think that's one of the reasons why i can make such quick decisions about what pencils i want to use it really helps because you kind of left your own devices and kind of make it your own a bit because if you sometimes i know photographers will put up a black and white and a color version of the same photograph and it would look completely different the black and white will be more dramatic and have more feel so i think working off a color reference you can kind of put your own spin off of it like yeah just blending out what i did blend 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 want to get rid of this harsh one yeah okay so i'm gonna go in with my mono eraser now just get off most of the back of the eraser i'm just gonna like the pencil short stubby strokes apply a bit more pressure to get the pencil off the paper As you can see it's not really taking off all the layers of the pencil just taking off the top ones and that really helps if you really go in and deep and scratch it away you'll get down to the bottom eventually there you go i'm gonna take my brush i'm not gonna put any graphite powder onto it and just Blend it out. There we go. Back in with my 3B pencil. Now you're just going to continue working on that area. I'm going to focus this now more on the darker areas and the lighter highlighted areas. I'm going to go in with another pencil my two edge to get that done really start to pay attention to where direction of the hairs and where the darker parts are short strokes kind of back and forth motion not just uh, up and down Slowly but surely, we are building up and getting where we want to get. So yeah, I'm barely, barely touching the surface of the paper. Bring in my harsher lines. There we go. We're building up the shadow in the shadows and the really working on those contours of the face there we go so now i'm gonna take my two edge pencil and we're gonna do exactly the same but on the light part and i will go over at the two edge with the two edge over the darker stuff that i went through just now so we're just gonna
So here I'm not focusing so much on the fur texture, just in some places I'm putting in the fur texture, like here, I'll maybe map out some fur. Short stubby strokes, back and forth motions. Start really focusing and honing in on those details. Back in, now I'm going to go with my little 8B pencil. Don't get scared, we'll be fine. <laughs> Just keep light pressure. Pencil will do the work for you. You must use these pencils to your advantage. I mean, I love this 8B pencil, especially for fur, building it up, it's so useful. Short, short stubby strokes. I mean, there is depth and variation in the fur, some are darker than others, and there's lots of parts. So, yeah, it just helps barely touching the paper. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with my two edge pencil and just continue working on those areas. So there's some very subtle highlights and shadows at the top part here. Yeah? Gonna kind of accentuate them a little bit. I'm making them a bit darker than they actually are. And then when you take the small blending stump, you can use the same one that you've been using the whole time. Okay. Just don't continue on.
just going to blend this out. Light pressure. Circular motions. There you go. Now I'm going to take my putty eraser. Just going to make a sharp little ridge with it. And then we're going to go in and just short stubby strokes. And we're going to kind of go everywhere with it. Accentuate this highlight here at the top. There we go. I'm just gonna fold it over, make a new point as it kind of makes it darker, difficult to erase because it picked up that pencil there on that small little tiny little ridge. I just want to take away this last line, so I'm going to stamp on top of it. Yeah, just blend. I'm going to take my 8B pencil again. Now I'm not going to go everywhere with it, just very select areas, kind of randomize it for. Hair stroke. So this is not quite stippling, but it's very short strokes. So it's very light pressure, I'm going to keep saying this because it's very important. You don't want to make any harsh lines, especially not when you're using these wee pencils. They can be quite a, a task to get out if you put them in too dark too quickly. But they are so useful they're more sometimes more useful and um, versatile than the H range it's just tricky to blend them out especially if you've got a your pa paper's got a tooth or a grain to it it can be quite difficult to do everything just with them and get it looking smooth So barely touching the paper and it's really oh, just like the effect it has.
Now I'm going to move a bit to the bottom half of the face. I'm going to leave that a little bit to sit. I'll come back to it. I sometimes need to leave areas alone, work on something else and then come back to it. Still going to keep my B pencils in my hands. So I'm adding a bit more pressure here because it is a bit dark on the side. And since this is a color reference, I can really do as my heart pleases with the darkness of it. Really. There we go. Kind of just use it to blend out this lighter area as well. Because if you put this 8B pencil with light pressure over a darker part, it will automatically start looking darker. That's what I like about it. You don't need to work hard to get what you want with it. Now I'm going to take my 2H pencil and we're going to continue working down here. So this has a lot more fur texture. I kind of feel like I'm not going to translate that completely down to here and kind of keep it close to reference. But there's still some kind of soft texture down here. There's definitely some detail I haven't gotten to putting in, like yes, there's some ridges and lines and shapes and contours that I haven't put in yet. We will get there. I still got to do some erasing and shaping and all that fun stuff. I'm going to use the brush. I'm not going to put in any more powder. Kind of scratch at the paper. Push in the pencil graphite powder to blend it. I'm going to take my mono eraser this time, not the putty eraser, because I want to kind of work in on this area that's got some details in here so I'm just gonna scooch my reference in closer so that I can have a better look what I'm doing I 
I sometimes find it useful to put in the shapes very loosely and then later worry about the about finessing it and putting in the details. I don't want to get stuck on the small stuff too quickly because that can kind of be overwhelming, especially if you start looking at the details immediately. Um, because in the end you do see quite a lot of stuff that you can put in and shapes and extra highlights and all that jazz. I think you kind of need to start out of focus and then move your way in and that way it's easier to take it all in and you kind of get to know the drawing and the end kind of know what you're doing what's going on there what shape you're working on so yeah also it teaches you to look at things differently really take it down to its basic shape and basic form there we go I'm going to make this less harsh I'm going to erase it slightly and then just use this small little stump and blend it into the side there we go because this ridge goes down into here but it gets darker here down at the bottom now i'm going to take a 5b pencil sharpen it up quickly we're going to work on this little area right here So I'm being quite precise with this little pencil. It's not quite the same form here. Let me just take the putty razor. This area right here. Too dark. And guess what I'm going to do now? I'm just going to blend it out. There we go. And you're just gonna work on it still light and soft pressure that's much better The more you draw a certain subject, the better you'll be able to put in things that you don't necessarily see in the reference or that are quite out of focus in the reference you really start to be able to kind of use your own mind's eye your own imagination experience to put things in if you want to maybe make a certain part more detailed or the reference is not that well or anywhere it's too dark or the contrast is not right then you kind of I sometimes use other references that have the same um, position of the head or the eye or the ear or the whatever and then I work with that doesn't necessarily for me have to be the same lighting as I can kind of now start to judge as long as the sun it highlights the same areas it's 
I can still then translate it into the drawing. That is quite handy to have a very extensive library of references. I have a ton. Some I will probably never use, but it's nice, especially if you have a, a reference that's not as well lit or there's something you want to draw, but it's not that well visible. It's very handy to go see what you have with the specifications and then work off of that. So I have done that before and it works. I mean, it gets the job done. So. Oh, just a handy dandy tip. There we go. Now I'm going to take the two edge. Now those parts. It's not much going on here, but there's stuff happening. Slide vein. Yeah. So I'm going to quickly finish this. Now I'll show you kind of what I want to do with this white marking on his face. So I'm still putting in my short stubby strokes or texture. We'll come back to that. I'll maybe start working on this section, move along a bit. I need to erase my eyes off a certain area and then I always come back over for details. So I'm going to quickly show you what I do with white little spots. It can be quite intimidating because it can be quite detailless depending on the light they're in. So there's a little grid mark that I want to get rid of. So I'm quickly going to erase that. There we go. Now since I'm leaving my background white, I definitely don't want the shape to be odd and strange. So, I'm going to fill it in quickly with a tad of bit of graphite powder. Good little legs, there's that went a bit over. Now I'm going to take, now I first need to find that edge pencil. I'm going to take a 5 edge. See, I've got, here's my 7 edge, but I'm looking for the 5 edge just like this. I'm taking this one. So it goes. There we go. So I'm going to just slightly outline it as well. And then we start. It's five edges. You'd expect it to be lighter. But really, because there's graphite powder down. So we are gonna just work on this area. Maybe take something a bit darker. I'm gonna take a B pencil, soft pressure. Quick 
me check my mono eraser. again there is a slight highlight that I do want to get in and then the blaze there we go and put it in more curve it there we go so it's all about pulling up that's why I try and leave the white areas white to last so that I have something to compare it to. Take my 3B pencil Obviously, the tech walls are from it. Here we go. So I'm just going to do it like that for now. Okay, so now I'm going to take my full edge and we're just going to create the illusion of airstrikes there is obviously form and contours in that area I'm just gonna allude to it there we go just gonna keep it like that okay so now I'm gonna go play around with this area a bit. Still the full edge pencil. This is too harsh for me, so I'm gonna quickly erase that line. There we go. Then I'm going to buff it out. Not buff it out. Um, blend it out. Mm, it's still too harsh for me, so I'm just gonna kind of circular motions. Just let the putty race do it for me. Pick up the pencil. There we go. Mm, I'm gonna move on from the full edge. Go in with my eight B again. And we're just gonna soft pencil strokes, nothing harsh. There we go.
There we go. So now I'm feeling a bit of an urge to move around just to get more in in the face. So that's what I'm going to do. So I am going to start with this little section and then I am going to go down to here. There's some nice contours and really nice shadows and lights and things to play around with here and then also be continuing and there's some tack shadows and everything so i'm gonna go quickly do this and then we're gonna move on to this little part right here there we go okay so start with our two edge pencil again if i can find it yeah and here it is so it's quite dark in here and let me just see, so just going to scoot, scoot, scoot. There we go. So there's not much going to go in, on in this little space. Just going to make sure we've got everything in that needs to be in. No. So I'm going to do the tack later, like I said, I won't be naughty and do it now. First do the horse itself. So now I'm going to go in quite dark from the beginning, so I'm going to go in with my 5B pencil. And then, so there's two really dark shadows, one on the tack and one on the face, so I'm going to do that. Not much to work with. Just gonna, yeah. Take an eight. HB. It's not much to do in this little thing here, so I'm just gonna put it in. Maybe that should do it for now. Not much to do there. Okay. Now this ring, I'm gonna continue on with that. So I'm gonna stay with my HB, which is gonna. Quickly just map out everything. Make sure that everything is where it should be before I start shading in the ring part. There we go. Two H, same. Just gonna lightly cover it quickly. Blend it in. Two H again. Now I'm going to put in shadows. Just going to mark out where everything goes. There we go. So you see, it's not dark or a deep shadow actually it's a deeper one here indent in the face but it's quite light it's gonna be you have to hmm, be the same it's 
I'm gonna put in that. Now I'm gonna take my 3B. There's quite a TV shadow there. And underneath here as well. Soft pressure the whole time. H again. I'm going to use this to blend out what I've just put in. Go in with something a bit darker, 5B. So I'm going to put the very deep shadow in that's actually a shadow for the ring itself. But it's just going to help with um, the actual shading in of this bottom bit. Light pressure building up the shadows. Obviously, for me, I like to put in the final details at the end when I've got most of it covered. So that in itself, it would look like there's not much to put in, but you will actually be surprised of the amount of things that you can still put in when the drawing looks finished. So we'll also be covering that. I'm just going to put that in there. Um, that's also quite extensive. I mean, you can draw as much as you like. There'll always be something you'll see or work on. But at one point you do become satisfied and say, I think this is done now. I think I've done my part. I'm going to go in with a fire edge. Soft pressure. I'm just going to work on this blend between the shadows. Eight B. Just gonna accentuate this one. Yeah, as well. Obviously, it looks strange now because the tack isn't filled in. You don't have that to reference. That's why I like going in with final details once I've got everything down, because then you can really really get it the way you want it also gonna go at top here so i'm not making the whole thing the same shade Because shadows do have interesting things that goes on inside them. Not all the same. 2H. I'm just going to blend. I'm 
going to quickly sharpen up my B pencil. There is some slight fur texture here, so I'm just going to start hinting at that. Short, short strokes. You can see them in the... Might seem like I'm doing nothing, but it will have an effect in the end. Remember, you want this area to have the same feel as this on this side. There we go. Getting there. As I go along, I'll refine shapes of things. Well, I'm going to leave it like that for now and just quickly go in with an 8B pencil and just put in some short stubby stippling strokes. Yeah. Now we're going to do the spots. Okay. Let me just adjust you a little bit. There we go. Okay. We are going to work on this area now. So, this is quite a lot of dynamic things happening to it. Contours, shape. There's a much short fur detail going on here. Some nice shadows from the bit and this nose band so we are going to work on that two edge pencil you guys should know the drill by now just sharpen it up Tad. there we go so not the pointy side the flat side there we go Just refining everything as I go along. So here, there's a little piece of the noseband that sticks out. There we go. And then obviously the the blaze continues like that. Soft pressure, nice loose strokes. So I'm using, like I said, I didn't put in all these details in. So I'm using everything that I did put in the tack and this. I'm using that to reference where I'm putting in. So this is slightly in line just a bit higher 
and in this corner in line with that so that's what I'm putting in and it goes down to about there where the ball bit is of the bit and there's one right here as well kind of blends into this contour here so I'm being very loose and actually very it's kind of very stark contrast oops okay and then there's the shadow here that makes quite a strange little shape and we'll refine that when we put in the highlights The year is also a bit darker. And these parts that I'm leaving white, I'm just going to blend over it with a stump. I'm putting in the shadows, the more dark areas, that's all I'm doing. I'm going to take my graphite powder. I'm going to put a bit of graphite powder on the brush now. Really tap it off the excess. And we're just going to blend. Also scratching motion. If you feel like you took off too much powder, you can easily put in more. That's what I'm going to do now. Even take a bit more, put down at the bottom, yeah. Right, we're gonna just the same as the top here. Going to take my 3D, 3D, 3B pencil, and we're gonna start from the top and work our way down.
So now I'm going to pay special attention to where the shadows are, how they align with everything else in the drawing. So remaining loose, sketchy. And here it's very important to take note of the basic shapes and forms, especially with these odd shadows. And this shadow kind of goes over to here. I'm just going to quickly. There we go. Brought this shadow in too far, so I'm just gonna erase it. Easy peasy, because of the light pressure we've been applying. 3B, so I'm gonna see that corner is there. Let's watch this. So I made the right decision to move this up because this lines up perfectly with what I had down here in the bottom and they are connected in the reference. So. There we go. Now I'm going to take my 2H pencil. And then I want to, I like this part, so I'm going to work on this part now. like the way it looks. I like the formation of the shadows and the shapes and the everything that's going on here. The folds in the mouth. Creases. A nice highlight right here. Still gonna go over it with pencil.
I'm going to use my blending stump and blend it all up. And even extend it over here. Now I'm going to take my two edge and we're just going to continue start building up this area right here. Take my 3B pencil Tombo Mono Eraser. Just going to take out these highlights here. HP Pencil. Just going to continue defining these shapes and forms. Quickly, just going to blend out this. B pencil quickly take my mono resin and just define this edge. And take my two edge and further define. There we go. Also, gonna erase and define this edge. Mm 
using quite hard a pressure now and just blending out what I've done previously. Going over the highlight as well. There's some very subtle lines and shapes and contours in this part and we'll be building up to that. Take my 8B pencil just very lightly go over the shadows and the parts that we already drew in. And I'm going to take my graphite powder and blend over it. And just blend over everything as it's quite a bit on the brush. And I'm going to take my mono eraser and just quickly clean out there. There we go. Just gonna go back over and refine.
just softly blend over that. I'm going to take my putty eraser. Just going to take up some of these harsher shadows. Just going to blend it again. I'm going to take my 5B and just rework those areas. Take my mono eraser because this is too much of a shadow. I'm just going to blend it. Then I'm going to take my mono eraser again. Just clean it up a bit so that I can get more proper erase from it. There we go. I'm just going to clean this edge on the bit. There we go. I'm going to take my 5H here. Just work on this. I'm going to slightly put in some here on the bit. Something. There we go. That's better. Party eraser. So when there's a bit more shape and contour to it, it does take a little time to get it just right and to look um, natural and organic and not just a few random dark lines with some highlights next to it so it does take a bit of more finessing as you can see i'm really taking pencil away and adding it in i'm gonna take my 8b pencil and just really put in a defined line there And it kind of just fades away. And then I'm going to do the same here. Put a really defined line in. And kind of darken this up. Because I need some reference. Not to make it look out of place. There we go. That's much better. So I'm going to take my 5B again. And we could just, just work on it. Take mono eraser. Just put that highlight back in. Take a two edge and just blend upwards into that highlight. There we go. I feel like this shadow on 
nose band is too dark for my liking. So I'm going to erase it. Blend it in. Okay. You could just rework it. Yeah. That's much better. So there is a dark line, but as I said earlier, the shadows aren't always solid. They have some stuff that happens inside of it. And I'm going to blend a bit more often in this area. It has to keep it soft. Oh, that to keep it soft doesn't necessarily mean you need a lighter pencil or edge pencil. You can continue working on, as I'm continuing working on with a 5B. can build up my layers quite comfortably with this pencil. It's all about the building up will make it darker and the erasing and the blending will keep it nice and soft. I'm going to take my 2H Take my blendings Just blend this in So we're just blending in what we've already put down in these top areas. And try and keep it as white as possible. Just 
still using my two edge. This is going to be a similar process, this area, as to what we're going to do for the neck. Well, the neck won't have as many contours as this. It will be the same process. Building up the layers, taking away of it, building up it again. Until we get it just right. Because it is going to take some finessing to make a large area not look flat. And actually have some dynamics to it. So as this is not flat at all, making it look organic while putting in the shapes is also very important and not make it look out of place and not just some random line put in. And take my mono resin, break it clean up here. There's a slot highlight from the shutter. So I'm going to take my 5B pencil again and we're going to continue working on building up our shadows. Not yet feeling the need to put in details. We haven't really gotten to the point where we've established our base just yet. So I would recommend putting in the details and focusing on that once you start getting very happy and um, content yeah, with what's going on underneath your details. That's when I'll start focusing on what I'm putting on top. not happy with the shape of that bottom ring so i'm just gonna go in again and refine it maybe that's better there we go that's better 5b again Gonna deepen up where we adjusted. So this ridge lines up with this one that goes here. Just blend that out. Five V again. This dip's a bit stronger. That shadow might take your mono eraser or any eraser and just dip that out a bit more. That's better. Kind of goes across like that, yeah. So if you want to figure out how something is going or how to shape it, I would recommend looking at the negative spaces. That can sometimes give it away how it's actually looking like when your eye wants to form it a certain way. But the looking at the negative spaces 
kind of breaks it down and gives you a truer shape to what it actually is it makes it a bit easier to figure out what what shape you're actually supposed to draw it in so I mean, one of the f few art classes that I actually took, the teacher, I did extra clicker art classes. We can take art classes in school. And we did one drawing where you drew literally just the negative spaces and did not look at the actual shape. You didn't look at the physical thing you're drawing, you looked at the spaces around it, which I think is also a very good exercise. So if you ever want to try that, I think we did it with a plant to just draw the negative spaces. It gets the exact same result as drawing the actual thing. It just helps you to learn to look at something else. If you're not quite getting it or you, it's getting too much for you looking at that physical item you're drawing, especially if there's a lot of detail. Because there was obviously leaves overlapping each other and everything. And it can sometimes be difficult to just dry, drain out the noise. And actually just draw the physical outline. So I, that was quite interesting. So that is a little fun little exercise you can do in your spare time. You can draw it from life as well. Put it maybe against a neutral backdrop or wall that's flat, has no color, varying color to it. So put some random stuff together and just draw the negative spaces. Just taking my mono eraser and doing some spot erasing. I'm just going to take my brush and just blend. Just softens the high, the erased part. And then we're going to continue building from there. Take my two edge pencil. We're just going to continue to build up these areas. Take my 3B pencil. There's just a deeper shadow within the actual shadow that I just want to put in while I'm at it. Same with top here. I'm just going to put in something that goes a bit darker. There we go. And just scoot it over the side. is more open so I'm just gonna quickly remove that dark part and blend it out Take 
take my mono eraser it's quite a highlight to do there and kind of links up to a highlight that I didn't see on this side there we go see as you build something else you start to notice other things around it especially the parts that you've already put in And that links up to that little veined edge that we drew today. Just gonna put in a darker outline for this nose band leather there. Just gonna take my mono eraser. Put this more highlighted. There we go. See, I do that sometimes when I start working on other sides. I start noticing things on in places that I've already drawn that I maybe want lighter. There we go. That I want to adjust maybe when I see it. If you do see something on the drawing that's catching my eye, you're more than welcome to put it in. We all see it differently. There might be some things I ignore and just decide not to put in, but you would be like, oh, but I like that part. I want it in, please. And then you're more than welcome to do that. <laughs> Make it your own. Just going to... Straighten this edge up. There we go. That's a deep highlight. And just straighten this edge up. And then clean it up on the other side. Two edge still. Just put in there. It is a dark shadow there. There we go. Slowly but surely we are building up and getting where we want. This dips in a bit more. So I'm just going to raise that top part. And you know what? Just blend and blend 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 just keep blending there we go now i'm gonna take my 5b pencil if i can find it i do lose my pencils quite quickly Not putting in details just yet, just still finessing the shape of what I'm seeing. This is definitely rounder, so I'm just going to round that highlight out. There we go. definitely lighter still just take 2H quickly just fill that in lighter than the rest there we go because this highlight is formed by this shadow as well 
to make it stand out a bit more. Take my mono rose again because it kind of goes in slightly for this little. There we go. Now, horses often when they're being worked or it's warm or something, they'll have these veins round. And I quite like drawing them in. The trick is just to draw them in such a way that they blend in and don't actually stand out too much. Uh, because I can sometimes find if you don't blend it in quite well or the highlights too stark and the con the shadow is too deep it can sometimes looks it looks out of place on the horse's head so it's always important to build it up and blend it in along with all your other parts and shapes and everything just to make sure it doesn't stand out so much that you think it's out of place needs to look underneath the skin it's just a slight bump and a raise nothing more 2 edge pencil again short strokes it's quite light in this area but i'll get to maybe take a putty eraser start lightening it up it's light it's not as light as the highlights but it's definitely not as dark as i currently have it Okay, so we're going to continue off where we left off. This is another day, by the way. So, we will see. Here we go. I know I left off. I checked the previous footage and I left off somewhere around here. So, that's what we're going to do. So, since I am not sure actually what I did previously, I just went and checked quickly. I'm going to take my 2H pencil. And then I'm just going to go what I see. And we are going to start deepening up over here. Getting maybe some details in. Some teeny tiny little fur details. And then work on maybe this is not as I would like it just yet. It can definitely have more depth, more value, more tone. More integrated, more looks. You know what I mean. It just does not look completed just yet so that is what we're going to continue on doing so yeah let's get going so i'm just gonna take my two edge and just start working my way through it yeah
So I know this is going to be a long project. I know my A3s can take a little while. But uh, I think this is a good start. I mean, it will cover basically anything. I know for next portraits we'll be exploring different subject matters, different animals that have a bit more... Um, different types of textures, maybe harder fur details and wrinkles and maybe some different patterns in the fur like I know people struggle with dapples and drones so that will definitely be some of the next especially focus tutorials as well because I think we'll maybe start with a focus tutorial and then lead into an in-depth tutorial that will maybe cover it a bit more extensively so I think I'll maybe do that in advance, maybe for difficult subjects, do a focus tutorial that will cover some of the more difficult parts of the next in-depth and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So I'm just taking a 4B pencil and just with light pressure, just going to work my way through. So it's actually been a while since I've drawn on this, so I will also I'll start seeing things that I haven't noticed before. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I need something a bit lighter than a 4B. No, not a B pencil. Maybe a 2B if I can find one. Ah, no, that's not what I'm looking for. My pencil is a mess. Let's take a B pencil. Yeah, I'm gonna take a B pencil. Oh dear, sharpen it up. So I just want something a bit lighter than the 4B. And I don't always know the reasoning behind it, just find a bit more control over what I'm putting down, especially if I'm going to start building up the tones and the values, all the shadows and everything. So yeah, I'm just using short strokes because there is some fur details. It's got very short fur. It won't be it won't be too difficult, but just to give the illusion of it will maybe take some more time than if it had longer fur. Because it almost like looks like you need to stipple in the fur because it's so short. But uh, yeah. I find sometimes shorter fur is maybe a tad diff more difficult because um, you can't really, yeah, there's no, not as much definition. You're more working on actually defining the structure of the face than you are the fur. The fur will be an afterthought because it is so short. You'll basically create an illusion of it where if it was longer fur, there'd be more definite drawing in of it. You'd have to put in a bit more effort, but I find the, the longer fur can be a lot easier sometimes than the shorter fur. And it's sometimes, if you do it right, it carries across a lot better as well.
So I'm just going to take a blending sump and blend in this. Because there's a ridge here that's got some highlights. So I just want to blend it in. We'll go in later and define the highlight. It's not that highlighted, but it's definite. Just blend, blend, blend. So I'm going to take my B pencil as well. I'm going to start short strokes here. Short, short, short. Just start defining this area as well. So I'm definitely noticing things that I did not notice before. Seeing little details that I missed. So we're still using short strokes, soft pressure. Just blending in what I did. I'm going to take a mono eraser just now. I can find it. I'm so bad at losing my things. Ah, oh, there it is. So I'm not taking away all the pencil I lay down. So I'm using very soft, soft pressure with the eraser as well. So I don't want to pick up everything that will defeat the purpose. Yeah, I've removed a bit more. So it's lighter there than I last saw it. just follow up along with this as well here's some very subtle highlights in this cheeky area I mean you can rush it and make it get where you want to quickly but I think things like this you have to take your time with it to really get the best results to really build it up I know some of I know I can be very impatient once it comes to portraits just want to get it done but I think we forget the progress the process of drawing it is sometimes the best part I know the satisfaction of seeing it done is it's great it's awesome but just actually doing it it's nice so just continuing on with my B pencil I'm going to 
inserted the slightly darker pencil, my 4B. Very soft pressure, you don't need a lot. So I'm not really blending in, I'm using strokes to for this pencil. Maybe add a little bit more check texture. Just going back and forth. I'm going to take my two edge, short strokes, a little bit harder pressure than I take with the B pencils. And I'm just using short strokes. So there is this part of the place is a bit more in the shadow. Taking my brush. And just go all over. Mono eraser. Let's clean it up a bit. So I'm also going to lack with the, the B pencil, short, soft strokes.
I'm going to take my two H short strokes. Just going to erase this in the middle, define it. So you just I'm one of those artists that I like to like 60 percent seven let's say 60 70 percent complete the area and then move on to the next and then at the end I'll go over again and really complete the details because once you've completed the whole drawing you kind of can see where you've maybe gone too dark or too light or you need to put in more detail or less detail or push it back more bring it more forward and all those things so i'm going to leave this for like this for now and then we're going to move on to the bottom part of the face the muzzle and the nostrils okay so i'm going to take an F pencil now and I'm just focused there we go I'm just gonna start working on shadows and values and start building up So I'm also lightly mapping out some of the more of the ridges and bumps as I go along. Using soft light pressure, as you can see, the F pencil packs quite a bit of punch. So, light and soft pressure for this. Don't want to go in too dark just yet. You can always also see the horse has a little bit of fleshy toned, pinky little marking there just 
Now the foam in the mouth. Just gonna slightly put that in. So this foam looks odd now because it kind of, it's very disjointed because the rest of the model is still disjointed. So that will start looking better as we go along. So I'm just blending all of this out. I should know the draw by now. Creature of habit. I have my steps and my routine and how I build up my layers. So the general principle applies most of the time. Um, but yeah, the execution and certain techniques will obviously change or become new or add something different or maybe try something new so it all depends on what you're drawing but the techniques can stay the same but the subject matter always always makes it interesting so that's always the interchangeable part the variable what will throw at you next, you know? Just gonna cover up that highlight. Slightly, with light pressure. Not adding too much. Now obviously if you see a ridge differently than I do, maybe you think my placement's a bit off or you like it somewhere else. You can obviously change it, maybe move it around. You obviously, if you drew the reference up, you might have put in more reference point than I did. Which is completely fine. I mean, we all do things differently, all see things differently. So yeah, you can apply the techniques that I'm using and then you can, I, wanted, I want you to have kind of your own way of thinking, doing your, doing your art your way, putting your own style in it as well. So we're going to have to be very careful to discern this little marking from the foam and as well as the highlights of the muzzle. So yeah, that's all about different tonal values and maybe some textures that will make it look different from the rest. That's where I think coloured pencil People that use colored pencils have that extra advantage of having an actual color difference, actual shade difference to discern between certain parts. I mean, we merely work in gray and various forms of gray. <laughs> then you've got to kind of make it work from there. I would love to learn colored pencil. They're just stupid expensive here in South Africa, so I'm definitely going to save up for that. Because I really, really, really want to try it, my hand at it. It's always beautiful to see the colour pencil artists working their way. And just, I think, look, black and white will always be my favourite, because I just love the drama of it. But just to have that extra little thing in your repertoire of a uh, colored pencil I think would be great so I'm just going to sharpen up my 4B pencil 
So yeah, that's something for me to look forward to in the future. Hopefully that will be tutorial, become tutorials in the future. If I can just save up some money. <laughs> Hopefully this Patreon adventure will help for that. So, so you scratch my back, I'll scratch your type of thing. <laughs> so yeah, that is definitely one of my goals, is to pick up colored pencils. I haven't had maybe the urge to maybe paint in watercolors maybe more acrylics or gouache I have a few gouache yeah but to do more illustrative style work with it I haven't actually played with it in a while but I love watercolor I haven't really had the urge to use oils um, probably just because I'm impatient and waiting for it to dry and actually having the space to use it I mean I can probably try acrylics but even that if I want to go with bigger projects I just currently don't have don't have the space for it unfortunately for all those big canvases I mean the paper with the pencils is very easy to store and get out of your way but I think uh, few large canvases and bulky things will make it difficult. Obviously you can start small but we don't always want to go small now do we? So I'm just starting to really define these shadows over here with my 4B. Keeping the light pressure I'm gonna go in just now with the 8B and just really define that line underneath the nose strap yeah and then we go from there just to define that as well there we go there's not much darkness here it's very tony the same so it's, it's going to be difficult to make it look interesting and actually discern between certain parts i'm definitely going to make it darker than it is in the reference but that's just generally how I draw anyways but that's just going to make it sometimes easier to discern between certain things especially if the reference is a bit flat in certain areas and that's completely up to you I mean it's your artwork you can draw it the way you like it so if you want to make it be a part of it darker to fit in all the rest of the aesthetic you can do that. I'm just going to take a blending stump. Just blend this bottom area. Mm, maybe just very lightly take the pointed side of the blending stump. Also do this side because I did put down a bit of pencil there. Just down here at the bottom as well. Just going to start slightly going over the highlights. Now I'm going to take my 2H and just continue along, maybe start defining the ridges more. See there's our little pinky mark. And the foam of the mouth as well. So with the 2H I am using slightly more pressure. That's just to get it to show up and also make a difference actually in the drawing because you do want to pick up a pencil that actually will make a difference. I mean I will sometimes pick up an edge pencil just to blend out a certain area and that will also make a very subtle difference and I sometimes like that effect that it can have.
So it's definitely not a constant line of you start with the H's and you move your way up to your B range and then you can't really go back. And that's utter nonsense. And they work so good together. You need to use them interchangeably. As you see, the 2H, when you do put a bit of pressure on it, actually makes a difference. The only problem I sometimes find with the H ranges is they can indent the paper. And I don't, it actually annoys me because I don't actually like the effect of indentation in the paper. So I try to avoid it as much as possible and really layer it up before I really go in hard with my H pencils. So I'm just going to blend again. I'm just going to quickly take my mono eraser. Now this is that little, I'm just defining it a bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to take my five edge. Just scooch, scooch, scooch. Okay. Then I'm going to start working maybe around here at the bottom, defining a bit more the foam. Very soft pressure because I don't want to indent the paper. So I'm using more the side of the pencil than the tip. This is actually going to be very subtle because it, you have to keep it subtle. Just gonna take my 2H just to find that there's a little piece of the mouth still there. Take my F and just a fine around here. Obviously we can take our mono eraser, there's some slight little residue of the foam over here on the mouth, but that can easily be erased with a mono eraser. And obviously up here as well, it goes in to the nostril. So I'm not going to stick, since it's a fluid shape, I'm not, it's not very imperative. That I stick to the reference as is. I can kind of make up my own thing as long as it looks organic and looks like it fits then you don't have to be very reference specific for it. Take my two edge pencil Just softly define that. There we go. Because there's little bubble thingies of ES foam is, so that we can add later. Obviously, imagine that sometimes here as well. Still keeping pressure very soft. Not too concerned about everything just yet. Okay. So I think I'm going to leave that as is for now. And then I'm going to take my B pencil. 
we're going to start now let's define the little edge underneath the nose band i'm going to take my trusty hb 8b pencil which is very close to the end of its lifetime <laughs> but we'll see how far we can push it and i use these derwent pencil extenders they weren't so expensive and it comes in a pack of two well in like our own local stationery shop it came in a pack of two and they're quite handy to have around especially when they become pencils become difficult to handle but they saw quite a few uses out of them and i have quite a few pencil stumps small ones that's all lying around i don't i don't really throw them away feel bad to throw them away I've done so much hard work so i'm just going to take this 8b Lightly, just quickly take my mono eraser, take up this, it's a lot more highlighted here, put that in, and this little ridge. So you can see a slight form starting to take shape, I mean, you can build it up. You can make it look that way immediately, but you want to make it look organic. So that's why I always choose the harder route. For certain textures, it's I usually take the shortcuts. But we'll get to those once we delve more into different type of portraits. Different animals that have different areas of difficult textures or yeah fur types and colors i know certain patterns can be very difficult so we'll definitely explore those and focus tutorials like i said i might do a focus tutorial that will lead into an in-depth tutorial which i think is a good idea start small and then we go big Obviously not all in-depth tutorials will be this size. So yeah, but I really wanted to draw this one in a big size. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm taking you along with me. Just blending it out. It looks quite flat now. But... I'm not too worried about that. Got plenty of time. Now I'm going to switch over to the front side of this nostril. Let's start. So here's also the same pinky tone that's on this marking. Blur. So there's the same pinky tone that's on this marking, but it's in a slightly more shadowed area. So we'll keep that in mind, but it's the same concept. So I'm just taking my B pencil. Very lightly, I'm going to start deepening up the shadows and really start mapping out where everything is growing. So there's a very discernible highlight over here, but very nice shading and blending going on around it. And this definite highlight on the ridge of the nostril really makes it a deeper shadow line over here. It looks odd now because there's nothing surrounding it. So 
I'm just gonna take my cleaning stamp. I just wanna define this nostril without actually putting pencil down there. Then I'm gonna take my putty eraser and just lightly remove the pencil there. Taking my 5H. For light and soft pressure, this pencil can go very darker, a lot darker than I'm using it for now. But we don't want that just yet. We want to build up that tone so that if along the way we realize, oh no, I don't want to do that, we can remove it a lot easier. It gives you a lot more time to figure out what you're doing and if what you're do actually doing is what you want to do. <laughs> so yeah. Because I can sometimes become quite indecisive, especially if I'm coming back to the drawing after maybe a few days of not touching it. Then I, then I will, I have erased certain areas that I'm like, what the hell did I do <laughs> in my previous drawing session? I was like, I don't like this at all. And then luckily because of the method that I use, it's a lot easier to erase and then build up from there. So I have done that before as well, where I come back and it's like, Ugh, I do not like what's going on here. Not at all. Got to change it immediately. And I think we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves when that happens. I mean, that's part of the process. It's part of being an artist. We are, can be an indecisive bunch, I think. But I guess that's just in our nature. Constantly changing the way we think about art. And about our subject matter or chosen subject matter or if that changes along the way. So I'm just taking my blending stump, gonna blend this areas and kind of where I didn't touch with a pencil. As you can see there where I touch with a pencil, it remains darker than where then I didn't, so I just blend it in to those areas. Also just down here, I've got the mon eraser and you don't not too worried about that, about these little foamy areas. Putting some more pressure on the sump when I get to areas that are a bit darker. And I didn't actually put pencil down, so I'm doing that as well. Like here, yeah, I didn't put pencil down because it's generally actually a very highlighted spot. So I'm just defining at the edges of it with my stump, this as well. There we go. So now I'm going to take my F pencil and we're just going to continue along working on the darker areas, building that up. And as you saw over here, the F pencil quite works quite well for that. So we're just going to continue on defining. I'm going to kind of slightly like sketchy motions just for that area in just to find up that little shadow there and as you can see the blended base that we put in really helps with the pencils on top blending a lot easier and not looking as harsh which I quite like
So I'm trying to keep on the flat side of a pencil. And sometimes when I want to define an area, I'll go in with a sharper point. Just using circular motions as well. Or you can sweep back and forth, especially for like curved areas. I like doing this motion, this curving motion with a pencil. Because it just helps you define the actual shape. Obviously where there was pencil, it will be a bit darker. It will kind of help you define that shape. So there is some dirt with the horse edge with the bit in his mouth. So there's some green foam and dirt over here. Mm, probably going to leave it out. It's one of those things that I'll find distracting and not necessary to the drawing. So I won't add it in. As you can see, the motion of the pencil is very loose and sketchy. Not very, it's precise, but not precise. You feel it, what I'm saying. So I'm also slightly starting to define certain of the smaller ridges, smaller line, there's little bumps in the nostril area, but that's final details. I'm not worried about it for now. I'm going to take a cleaner blending some this time. So this all doesn't matter on the size as long as it's got a nice point. To it. I'm just going to use slight pressure. This one won't add as much extra color, oh, not color, but depth as the smaller one I just used. There you go. Just slightly using pressure here, so the ridges get defined. There we go. Now I'm going to take my mono eraser. We're going to this highlight I haven't really filled in a lot. Really define here some highlights here. I've kept this quite open. Some foam highlights on this ridge going down here, so I'll just add it a bit in there. 
the highlights down at the bottom it's not at the top it's at the bottom over here it starts going at the top of the little indents in the lines As you can see, this little ridge lines up with that one as in the reference photo. And this one, there's one slight little bump that connects with this over here. So always bear that in mind as well when you're drawing out things that it lines up with what's going on on the other side, especially when you've got tack. It sometimes moves a little, it sometimes slightly off but just make sure that it's kind of lining up and it moves in a continuous line or the the idea is there that it's the same vein or contour and this is just my two edge pencil So these little foamy bits have quite defined edges on them. So I'm going to define the edges on the ref on the drawing as well. There we go. I'm going to go in with something darker just now in this nostril area. I'm going to do that now. Taking my 4B, we're going to sharpen up a bit. It's quite it's sharp, but I need it a bit more precise, especially for this little ridge over here. This is actually not very hard pressure that I'm applying here. It's just the pencil. You let the pencil do the work. There we go. And I'm just going to blend out. So just continuing on with my 4B and then we're just going to very, very, very light pressure. We're just going to start and continue to define what we've been build, building up with the pre previous pencils. I'm using soft circular motions, flat side of the pencil that's been worn down, 
circular motions we're just working our way around there we go looks odd now and out of place because everything around it hasn't built up but I'm just putting it in for reference that as I blend it out it stays there and it kind of blends in with the rest of the drawing I'm not afraid to go in the 4B into the foam. I think it will maybe add some nice dimension. So I'm just going to take my blending stump and soft motions like before and just blend everything in. And the B pencils really do blend nicely. I'm going to kind of start blending in this highlight as well. And I keep it in the direction of the shape and the contour of whatever I'm drawing. Over the highlights. Okay, so I am going to cap this off here for part one of the tutorial. Um, I think this basically covers the basic of this front part. This tutorial is going to take a while, I have to say that, but I think it's going to be a fun one. We've got all the tech and the, all the bits and the bobs and the mane and the neck and everything. So I'm going to leave it here. This is a basic covering of this whole area, which I think is a good start. I would happily leave this and then move on to another part of the drawing. Um, as I've said multiple times, I like to cover the area first roughly and then go in with details later. So yeah, this is part one. And I really hope you enjoy this and I can't wait to see you guys for part two. Bye-bye.